47 feet, but it's only got sleeping for two. Or does it? So it could work well as an office. It's also a really nice lounge, but yes, it's got a super nice fold out double bed as well. So stay tuned. We're gonna go right through what I think is a really cool design feature of this boat, the Sabre 43 Salon Express. New model, first one in Australia. But if you are someone who's had a Beneteau or a Genoa, say 50 foot sailing yacht and you like to do your cruising. If you're someone who maybe appreciates classics, whether it's like an old classic Jag or an American muscle car, you like that classic look. Or if your kids have just nicked off and they're not at home anymore and you don't have to take them on all your holidays, well then, if that's you, keep watching because this is a boat that's pro probably or possibly going to appeal to you. She's 47 feet LOA, she's 43 feet on the waterline and she's an absolute stunner of a couple's boat for fast, comfortable, medium to long distance cruising. And she will also do really, really awesome day boating, but it can be operated by a solo operator because it's got some really cool technology. So Dan Jones is my name. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. Uh, we're in Sydney. I have been traveling around a little bit, so I thought I'd let you know that. And um, there is a test drive. We've just done it. You may notice on the microphone right now, the wind is blowing. It's actually blowing from the south, and we've got quite a bit of decent swell out there. And we, we did tackle a few really large waves into the waves, across the swell, and then we belted down the waves just to give you an understanding of really how capable these hulls are. I have been to the factory in Maine. They're built in America, northeastern part of the States, and everybody that I met there seems to be a generational fisherman or boater of some sort. It is, honestly, it's the home of really beautiful boats. It's a wonderful location. And that's where this company comes from. So um, Down East Styling is the home of Sabre Yachts. So get out here on the back of the boat. There's a couple of these 43s on their way to Sydney now. This one is the fixed platform. You can do an option for drop down with your tender out the back. This particular owner doesn't know if he wants a tender or not yet. We can see that the air can pass through just here. If you've got some swirls, that's on a stainless crate just there. And if you did have the drop down, this would help you get back and up and out of the water. That's gonna be your uh, shore power plug-in just there. And you can see the stainless steel cleat on port aft. We have the same on starboard. We've got lots of space across the back here for a name. You'll have to do something funky on this boat, we can do our uh, flagpole just centrally mounted here and just get a, get a feel for the size and the thickness of some of the gear that we're looking at here. It is really good stuff. So entering, coming up one step and for the Australian market, I love how this particular owner has set the boat up because rather than going teak on everything, which you can do if that's your vibe, we've just got the, the gel coat essentially. It's, it's grippy fiberglass and it's just been done in cream and then we've got the white color uh, as we go up from there so it's practical for our climate much better in my opinion we've got to pull out hot and cold shower just here this is your operate operation for your courtesy lights and that's where they are they point down so they're not going to ruin your night vision of an evening but then just get all of this in shot jordan because the the style that we're on, down east style, is one that you come out here and you really enjoy your afternoon. So you can option these boats with gyros. They all come with a Jenny and air conditioning as standard. I would think about it if you're on a somewhere like Sydney Harbour and you have a lot of boat wash, because having this area usable and stable from a social 
perspective is probably going to be quite appealing to you. But look at the space. I'm 5'7". I've got a huge amount of uh, leg room here. So if you're a bigger guy or girl, you're going to be quite comfortable. So just in this part of the cockpit, we've got uh, a lovely little love seat just here. I'm pretty sure this is an option as is the Barbie area just there. But that armrest pops up if you want to increase some space. And just here, we've got the electric Kenyan Barbie that's surrounded in some Corian and then fiberglass on top. And then we've got some neat drawers. They're all plastic, so they're gonna last forever. And they're shallow drawers, all the same size, one, two, three, just in there. So that's gonna be handy for various bits and pieces. Um, one of the things, this is, you'll see this on all the Sabres that I've seen so far anyway, the engine access is here, accessible from the cockpit, and it is aft of all the social spaces. So from the noise perspective, insulation and comfort on long journeys, it really is an excellent boat from that perspective. We're gonna go inside in a second, because uh, I wanna just run around the decks before we go inside and just show you what's going on. This is a sure shade. This is operated from the inside on the port side. It's just a button and it will electrically deploy. This is an option. You can also do the mesh setups on poles, I believe, if you want to protect this area just here. Fusion control there, drink holder just there. And then when we go forward, um, down lights and speakers just here, by the way, we have some neat and clever little storage spots for fenders. So just one fender in there, same again on the other side, but we've got heaps more space down below in the engine bay. It's quite a large one. And I believe there's some more storage up, up the front as well. Before we get there, just pay attention to this design. So if you're doing a raft up situation or if you're coming into a fixed dock, just here, we have a grab handle. So that just comes off this vertical support here. And then this is grippy just there. So it is actually a thoroughfare if you're boarding from a fixed dock or going between boats, it makes sense. Do pay attention if you're going forward in a, you know, a rough weather that you send someone who's good on their feet because that could be a risk. They could fall in the drink there if they're not paying attention. So forward of the fender storage, we've just got a little drain here. So any water, rain particularly, is actually gonna drain here and not go down through the main part of the cockpit. And we do have the only bits of timber, which again, for the Aussies, anyone watching from outside of Australia, our sun, our sun is very strong here it just eats up everything including us so we try to minimize timber so from our perspective this is bougie it's gorgeous but it's something we can maintain so you've got timber features just along here i actually saw them installing that at the factory they've got about nine coats of varnish on them as well and just up here on the gunnel lovely nice touch not over the top so really really good the roof design just here does actually provide another handhold. So if you're coming forward, you go from the risk zone with a handhold here to then holding onto the roof until you reach an actual grab hold just there. And then this railing comes up. So it is fine. The other thing worth pointing out, the center of gravity on these Sabre yachts, it is quite low. Their positioning of the motors and the fuel tanks and all the heavy items are done quite well they throw the fuel tanks a little bit forward to balance it out quite well so um, nice finishing here just on the gunnels we've got a stainless steel strip there so you can bump it into a few poles if necessary roof design got a little bit of overhang forward and on either side so the high midday sun it's not going to belt down on too much of your glass keep the heat load to a, an acceptable amount i would say Pay attention to the stainless steel here. So that's a window going into our little office, spare bedroom, little lounge area, which I really love. I think it's a clever use of space. We'll get to that. And then welcome to the bow. It's huge, it's elegant, looks good. It's got quite a lot of presence when we're underway. Bashing through those seas, I felt so confident. So while we're here, let's just have a look up on the roof. We've got one, two, three, four, opening roof hatches. So while she's really well air conditioned, we've got great ventilation, air horn, radar, mast, um, navigation, VHF lights, and space for a Starlink, which I think many of you are gonna appreciate uh, coming into the future if you're not already. Coming down the port side, uh, same amount of space on the starboard side. Diesel, waste, 
water just there midships on the port engine ventilation just here the logo in stainless and we have that other fender locker just here down lights underneath the roof and so everything that you would expect on a top quality setup like this so we're going to go inside i just want you to pay attention so you operate this lever down and look at the door see how i'm pulling one but they both isn't that cool isn't that very james bond i love that so that's that just makes life easy for you. It's very well founded stainless steel frame and construction, but the insulation is fantastic. So just come and have a look at the thickness of this door just here. It is noticeable. See the rubbers just in here, how we have two rubbers there and there, and this stainless piece, and they bed into this side of the door. They've just gone to the extra level to make sure that sound, which is external, already well insulated from the engine bay, doesn't penetrate into the cockpit or into the saloon because you really do notice. That's just one of the things I have to point out on this design. So come inside, we're gonna appreciate what they refer to as a stick build interior. So that's actual shipwrights building the thing instead of Ikea modules all being put together on a production line and getting dropped in one at a time. People are putting this interior together by hand. I saw it myself at the factory, it is very impressive. Um, with all the work that goes into this, yes, you will hear the timber a little bit in, when you're in big seas. Normal conditions, you're not going to hear it, but in big seas, you do hear it a little bit. But because the boat is so incredibly well insulated and so quiet, I think you hear it perhaps a little bit more than what you would ordinarily because the engines are just so well essentially taken out of the picture. So, up here is a ventilation shaft to allow air conditioning to pass out through here. We've got that on both sides. We can see the inside of the hatches as well. And now we've got leather finishing and timber on the roof with down lights all around. So if you want to do a meal inside here as a couple, or if you want to do drinks as a group, you could put six people, maybe eight at a touch in here. So what does that mean? Everybody who can have a seat out there can still comfortably move inside if it's too cold or too hot and you need some protection. So I think that's a bit of a design thing. And we've got storage underneath all the seats. We have these drawers, one, two, that's air conditioning. Another drawer here, another drawer there, air conditioning. The table will drop and as you can see, it's a high gloss and we're standing on a teak floor just here. Um, one of the things I'm going to go to this later in the video is the sort of emphasis that they've put on serious cruising. So underneath this hatch here is a proper storage room. We've got a couple extra freezers in this particular one. You can do washer and dryer and you would even be able to store if you're into say some kite surfing or inflatable boards or other water toys would go really, really well here. Centrally mounted and long-term storage for foodstuffs, for example, or alcohol would go really well in there as well. Draw just here, and then galley to port and helm to starboard. So I think we're gonna focus on the helm. Um, we can see more of this same leather finishing on the roof just here. And then let's just zoom in or zero in on the dash. The first thing is these seats. Um, stids, I think they're called stids. Anyway, or the Yanks will know them, you guys love them. Really, really nice, top quality um, seat this is, and incredibly comfortable on your butt <laughs> for long periods of time. So this particular one has got the joystick just here. So from a helmsman's or helmswoman's perspective, operating this in close quarters, it's fantastic. If you wanna learn more about that, we did touch on that and demonstrate it in the test drive video separate to this one. Um, from a long distance driving perspective, you can see I've got my foot rest here. So does the guest next to me and the seats themselves are adjustable. So you can assume this position, you don't have to drive with the steering wheel. You can actually transition to steering by joystick cruising at your 27 knots with these IPS 600s. It'll do 31 knots if you get the 650s. They're the top option, so that is possible. So now, look at me from the standing position. I did a lot of standing going through the big waves. I felt more comfortable because I wanted to operate the throttle. And so from this position, 
it is quite comfortable. But just look above me. So all of you tall guys, maybe, Jordan, just get the camera to my eye line and look forward. A lot of people like to know what I'm seeing. So me at 5'7", really good viz forward. And even if you're a six foot bloke or girl, you, your eyes are gonna be about here. So you're also gonna have exceptional visibility forward. So it's, it's not gonna detract from your experience. In terms of the what we have on the dash, so just make sure you get all that in shot and you can see the throttle is just here, all the usual stuff you'd expect from Volvo. We got the ignition and digital start stops just over here, windless power, fireboy system here. This one's got the quick, so that's the operation of the anchor from the helm, but we can also do it up on the bow. We have a nice convenient little phone holder, I like that. Just here, that's actually the windscreen wiper operation and it's quite useful. We've got speed just here. We've got individual wipers, which we can select, port, middle, starboard. We've got fresh water wash, or we can do all three at the same time by pressing the on off just here. More boat systems, multifunction displays. They're the big screen Garmin's and they're well bedded into this beautiful timber surrounds. And you've even got little sunglasses and phone storage in there. Cummins Onan, Gen Z operation just here. This is gonna be the VHF. That's a new whiz bang one that I don't know much about, but um, I can clearly see it's a VHF, but I'm assuming that's a digital screen. Haven't tested one of them myself yet, so I can't talk about it too much. Got the Fusion just here, the primary Fusion display because we have a secondary Fusion back aft that we saw. Light switches just here, and that, that's your air conditioning control. There's gonna be a few of them dotted around because it's a multi-zone boat. Um, with multiple compressors. So, um, don't forget the opening door. Actually, I'll quickly just open it. So, when it swings open, it doesn't detract or reduce the beam too much to hinder you moving forward from the aft part of the boat. Some opening doors stop people moving forward. This one does not do that. It opens that way, obviously. So, if you're wanting to go forward, it makes sense and then you can lock it from the inside and don't forget we've got these blinds all the way around the boat and they all stayed in position dropping off two plus meter waves which you can see in the test drive so plenty of grab handles the guys i have now met the design team over there in maine they're all really experienced boaters so when you see all these little design cues places to hold on to rounded edges here here with incorporated grab handles you can just tell it's been designed by someone who actually does go to sea that's not always the case on many boat brands so some brands are designing their boats from a marketing perspective which is fine too they know that certain people uh, want to move in a certain direction and it's more market driven or the marketing department driven what's that um oh they're the covers for those okay i'll just put them over there um and it's definitely not the case with Sabre. It's just designed and built by real serious boaties. We did have a cyclone when I was there. So I saw the sort of conditions that can get blown in from the Atlantic uh, when I was over there. And it's quite serious, quite similar to what we get here. So you need to have a proper boat, put it that way. Isotherm fridge, just here under the helm. So that's kind of handy. Nothing underneath the skipper because we've got more air conditioning. We've got sink and storage, so that's storage deep sink, hot and cold, AC outlet here. I like to have the 240 there so you can run a kettle or a coffee machine. And we can also do another one just here. Anything underneath there, not that I can see. Decent splashback. We've got the Corian all the way around. And then we've got the microwave here. We've got some fiddles above it. So if you put things here, they're not gonna fall off in a seaway. One, two fridges, that actually looks like a freezer actually. And then we've got one, two, three. Two deep, one shallow drawer here. Decent cupboard in here, which is gonna be good for a bin. This is a privately owned boat, so I'm not trying not to open all the cupboards. That's why I'm just pointing out as I go. Underneath the stairs, just here, you've got fire extinguisher, you need space for another small amount of safety gear. I will open this one and come back to the other one. More amazing storage. So this one is a lot smaller than what we discussed before, but they've even incorporated some little drawers in here so great place for safety gear and it's just nice to see that everything is so accessible on this boat 
Now, come around, Jordan. Let's just have a look at our control panel. This is one of the first Sabres of this size to have full digital switching incorporated into the boat. So you can select the scene. We do all that from up at the helm, but just here, we can have another uh, display, so to speak. And we can see gen set operation. We've got power, feed out, and all of our switching, 240 and 12 volt just here, 12 on port, 240 on starboard. And we've got our batteries down the middle. Obviously, for those of you watching in America, which is actually most of you, instead of having 240, it's going to be 110. So that's gonna be 110 just here. We call it 240 and that's 12, 12, all of them individually marked and hidden quite nicely behind that. So I think I've covered everything worth noting. A couple of storage lockers underneath each stairs. They haven't wasted a bit. Come with me. This is what I think possibly one of the cleverest layouts for this style of boat and for so many of you in today's world. So this is not an option to be a private second cabin, although there's a, there's a little trick. Um, look through the windows here, appreciate the window just there, and then look at the opening, uh, opening and fixed glass. So from my perspective, no matter where I am in this, what is currently a neat little office away from the office, I've got views out over the water. I'm appreciating the, the, the natural light. You know, if you're in a cold place coming through the roof just there, and if you're at the marina, you're not being bothered by your neighbors. So you actually can do some focused work down here. So that in itself is very clever. Yes, we've got air conditioning. Yes, we've got natural ventilation through there. But, but check this out. You, can you see what's going on here? Press of a button we've got a proper bed just back here. That that goes all the way back here. I'll actually just lie on it just to give you some perspective and I'll touch my feet to the end. Okay, now my feet are on the end. I'm 5'7". It's a proper bed. How good's that? So if you if your friends are annoying you, you don't even need to tell them that you have a second bed. You can say, look, sorry guys, we'd love to have you, but there's just no space. Um, and... <laughs> And if the grandkids need somewhere to stay, they've got it. And also, for so many of you, you like to take your cushions off rather than cover them. This one has covers. I'm talking about the cushions out in the back cockpit. That's a great place to store them. It's such a great place for storing so many items. Just throw them in there, hinge this up, get them out of the way. So I think it's really nice. And obviously, it's also just a super nice drinks, lounge, social space with some privacy as well so use it like an office use it like a lounge eat a meal down here if you want to i just think we're getting some really really good options on what is quite clearly a couples focused boat so now just look at these two little setups just here i will open that we've got the tv i'm assuming you noticed that but look how neat that has been done that is behind the dash so nothing is being hidden, everything's accessible. So for those marine electricians watching, that's gonna be handy. We've got some more storage just in here. So that's hanging locker, probably a good place for wet weather jackets. That door opens as well. Um, access into the bilge below me here and day head, the, essentially the only head on the boat is accessible through here through the day, but we've also got private access from the one and only master. So come on in, I'll just get over to the side and let you appreciate this. Again, this is where the stick build comes into its own. So come on in and just soak all this up. We've got his and hers lockers on either side. I'm not gonna open this one because I said it's a privately owned boat. We've got neat little extra lockers on each side, which is kind of handy. They've got fiddles above each one. This shelf, running down both port and starboard has a fiddle and will be great for phones and items that you want to books and things throw on the side of the bed of an evening you could sit up um, most people could sit up and read a book just there and we've got some extra natural light and ventilation straight above your head so if you're not an air conditioning person you do have some workable options we've got a forward facing hatch there the further forward facing hatch just there and you've got cross flow 
ventilation through these ones just here. So that's incredibly clever. Um, there is storage underneath the bed. So we've got one, two, three drawers, one large and two small. And now there's your full size standing mirror. So you can check yourself out. This is your access into the head. And I do appreciate these tiles. I like the color and the design. It's not going over the top. It's quite, quite bougie. I'm just gonna step into the shower so you guys can soak all this up. So we've got a, a locker there, another one here, two small ones here, and an adjustable mirror, depending on your height. We've got a, an electric flush, fresh water flush toilet just here. And then I've got in the shower cubicle itself, this seems like tough and glass, not, no, I think it's Perspex actually, just really good stuff. And then you've got a little locker here, but in terms of the space we have, adjustable shower thingamajiggy here. We've got some ventilation, electric and natural just there. And you've even got access probably into the holding tank behind the shower cubicle there. You're on Corian and then tiles down below. So it's quite a workable shower unit. You can probably, oh, you can. You can hang your wet weather gear on this little rack just in here on the rough days and then go and store in the locker that we just saw below. So um, come on through. I want to just show you underneath the floor here. So that's access into the bilge. The reason I want to show you this is because I was so impressed by the performance of this boat going through big swells. And it's evident here by seeing the dead rise or the angle of the hull, the V shape at this part of the boat. So rather than seeing a flat surface and we see a, a nice amount of V, that's what's softening the ride for you, which is just quite pleasant. So this is the storage space I wanted you guys to appreciate. Just actually come with me um, and get a load of this. It is really, really well done. So this one's got a couple of extra freezes, freezes installed. And you can see it's got a toolbox just there, but look at all the space we have over on port. So you could do washer and dryer as well. And all of this opens up all of these black ones to get into the bilge as well. So that opens up as well. So that's fantastic. These stairs will remove as well. So if you've got bulky items going in or out of there, you need the extra space. That's very doable. And just picture yourself, you know, maybe um, it's kite surfing, inflatable toys, all that sort of stuff is gonna, gonna go exceptionally well down there. So now let's have a look at the engine room. If I can get my sunnies out, cause it's middle of summer now being January and the sun's got a little bit of bite to it. So very easy on gas struts. It does clear the grab handle just there and it's beautifully insulated. And then we've got a drain on either side. Um, once again, I'll actually just bring you guys with me. So we've got the Volvo Penta IPS 600s and on this particular boat, we've got the genset, which has been running the whole shoot, mounted on the center line aft for weight distribution. And we can see the IPS drives just there. And then we'll have a look. We're, we're looking to port right now. This is the extra fender storage location, which can be used as fender storage that I mentioned before. Fuel filter, fireboy system, power distribution, up on the main bulkhead. Look at the construction and the stringers supporting the hull. We can see some batteries just there. And then you can get around the motors on both sides. Very well lit and white painting. So nice and bright when you're down here. So the fuel tank and all the weight that's consistent with that is forward of this location for weight and balance. So I'm just gonna pass that camera back up. So yeah, that's the boat guys. Um, compare this with a Palm Beach. Compare it with a Riviera, compare it with a Grand Banks East Bay or any premium high quality sports sedan style of boat because it is in that category made in america 
by people who know what they're doing. I've been to the factory now. I really am quite impressed with what Sabre are doing. Um, so if you are someone who values or dreams of the idea of getting out there and cruising fast and doing moderate distances, I'm talking about 150 to 300 nautical miles, kind of makes sense. You're really gonna rip up the miles on something like this. So imagine, as I've just done, going from Maine down the east coast of America, on the west coast of America, north up into Canada and all those parts of, uh, parts of the world, and quite clearly here in Australia, down to Tassie, up to the Whit Sundays, and even on the west coast. Amazing, amazing, amazing. If you've come from a sailing yacht and you want to now enjoy protection from the weather, speed and more capability, this is definitely something you need to look at. But also if you've come from an adventure boat and you're now thinking you need something with more accommodation and equal amounts of hull capability that you're used to, you will get some value from this boat. So if you want to see what it's like to drive, we're about to do that, you are invited. It's a separate video to this. I'm gonna pop the link up on the screen right now. Uh, my name's Dan Jones. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Don't forget to support the channel. I'm independent. I make these videos myself. I make them for you. No one influences me. I know I'm not trying to influence anyone. I just want you to use my videos to educate yourself. So I really do hope it's useful. If you find it useful, I would appreciate your support in any way that you can do. I have got a Patreon. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this day. It's bloody nice. You should too, keep watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.